Ali وصحبه أجمعين. Let me go back and make it in slide mode. Today uh, we are celebrating a woman author from around the world, uh, from kid literature to adult literature. I'm honored to be here with you. So happy to have friends from all over the world. And hopefully this inshallah webinar will be informative and uh, beneficial to, to uh, all the attendees. Uh, why this webinar? So we will have some idea about why we are conducting this webinar. And uh, we will know more about our author, Laurie Ann Thompson. And uh, we will feel, inshallah, in love with her and uh, in love with her uh, books and the way she, she writes, the way how she perceives this world. Number three, we will see uh, some things between Lori and Najwa. <laughs> Maybe this, this is, will be excited. And inshallah, we will provide some reading list for teachers and for you know some uh, readers who are interested in, in children uh, literature. So why uh, this webinar? As you can see, and as Dr. Amaira mentioned, we are celebrating Emirati's uh, uh, Women Day. Uh, uh, it is a very, uh, very distinguished day that we all, not even uh, to be honest with you, Emirati celebrating, we are celebrating all uh, women here in the UAE and uh, maybe many of, of us uh, don't know uh, the purpose behind, you know, this day and why it is uh, here and uh, uh, what was the rationale behind it? So maybe I will take this uh, uh, opportunity uh, to, to tell you that the celebration of uh, Emirati Women's Day uh, has been announced for the first time uh, on 15th of August in 2015 by Her Highness uh, Sheikha Fatma bint Mubarak, chairwoman of the General Union, Women Union and the Supreme Chairperson for the Family uh, Development Foundation and the president of the Supreme uh, Council for Motherhood and uh, Childhood. The date uh, marking uh, the anniversary of the creation of the UAE uh, General Women's uh, Union in 1975. So uh, we are so proud of all the efforts that has been made by our Sheikha, our uh, uh, Emirat, Sheikha Fatma, fi Amarha. And every year we would celebrate this day. And thank you, Dr. Amaira, for choosing this day to, to make our webinar. The second reason why we are conducting uh, uh, this webinar that we are all like to read. This is an encouraging habit that we would like to spread out here in the college and in the university and also in our community reading. As you know, as teachers, professors, academics, students, reading is something very unique that uh, uh, really shapes our spirit, shapes our personality, shapes our uh, attitude. I encourage everyone to, to have time. I know that many people would say, Dr. Ayani, we don't have time. We are having hectic schedules and so on. But re reading really change. Uh, try it once and you will never uh, will never forget to, to find the time to spend this enjoyment with yourself uh, and with, with, with your books. Maybe the third uh, reason for us for conducting this webinar that we are currently working in several projects. So teamwork, it's also a habit and attitude that I would like to, to share with you here. Please don't work alone. Uh, working with others is a blessing. And we here in the College of Education like to put people, uh, not by uh, force, I mean, <laughs> encourage people to, 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 to partner with their colleagues, with their sisters and brothers. It will be easier for you when you start such a thing and, and instead of having everything uh, starting by yourself. So I'm pleased, uh, to be honest with you, to work with uh, Professor Hala and Professor Myra and conducting a research on the reading lives of teachers, which also includes the development of a catalog of uh, diverse picture books uh, depicting uh, ex 
exceptionalities and awareness of, uh, of the others in society. Very important uh, project. I'm so enjoying so far. And although of the tons of uh, picture books, Dr. Amaira <laughs> have us to read and to analyze, but it really took me to, to several souls and several uh, uh, words. Uh, uh, I felt that I was part of all the books I read and uh, analyzed. I really enjoyed uh, all the time I spent uh, uh, with these books. Uh, also another reason for uh, bringing this uh, webinar together that we like to bring our work uh, to others, sharing and exchanging knowledge as a philosophy here in the college and among our colleagues. We like to share this uh, information, knowledge, research, so we can give them maybe a push to do more, inshallah, and uh, uh, to participate in sharing uh, uh, their uh, research with us so we can all work in, uh, in a team where we celebrate by the end our achievement and uh, inshallah, having these uh, project papers published, inshallah, very soon. Uh, many reasons uh, behind choosing this wonderful author, wonderful writer, uh, Laurie Ann Thompson. I came across several uh, authors, female, I mean, female authors, but I felt uh, so touched when I, when I read her uh, books, when I dig deep in her personality uh, as uh, a lady, as a female, as a mom, as a writer. So I, I thought it will be uh, the right and the perfect choice for me to be included, inshallah, today in this uh, webinar. Uh, she is a formal uh, software engineer. Laurie Ann Thompson uh, now writes for young people to help them understand the world we live in so they can help make it a better place for all. She strives to write nonfiction that encourage imagination and fiction that reflect universal truth as seen in Emmanuel's Dream, a picture book biography of a man who changed his country's perception of disability and uh, winner of the ALA Schneider Family Book Award and ALA uh, Notable Book and CCBC Choice and a Bank Street the College Best Book of the Year and other dumbs of, uh, of other awards. We really uh, appreciate the work and the effort she put to bring, to bring many things uh, uh, to our life. And you will see uh, in this uh, short presenta presentation that I have how wonderful she is when she touches uh, personal lives of others and how wonderful she is when she brings truth and facts to little children. Lori's life, uh, I thought it is wonderful to shed light on this part of her life so we know uh, more about her and what makes her a good writer. She, uh, she said, I grew up in a small town in rural uh, Nether, uh, Wisconsin. When I was a, a kid, I loved uh, books and animals. Not much has changed. I graduated from college with a degree in applied mathematics and become a software engineer. I always loved writing though. And when I had children of my own, I was reminded how much I love children's books. It was time for a career change. So it's wonderful how moms can be adaptable to their uh, life changes and they can move from one position to another, pursuing their dreams and pursuing the love of, of reading and writing. I now write for children and young adults to help my readers and myself make better sense of the world we live in so we can contribute to make it a better place. What a wonderful philosophy she has. She is taking reading as a tool to change the world and as a tool to change people, uh, people's life. And I found this very touching to me. She said, I strive to write fiction that gives wings to active uh, imagination and nonfiction that taps into our universal human truth. I believe that each of us is capable of doing amazing things once we discover our passion, 
our talent and our purpose. Reading is a great place to start. I agree with her 100% that reading is the start for, for many successful stories, whether we lived in as people or we shared, or people or uh, other friends shared with us. Most of the stories I read or most of the stories I, uh, I talked about, it usually go, uh, go back to, to reading. Uh, that source of information, that source of change really pushed people to make a significant uh, contribution to, to their lives. She said, my books are represented by Amy John Packett, uh, at Erin Murphy Literacy or Literary Agency, and my articles have appeared in Odyssey, Faces, No, Kono, We Ones, and Parent Map magazines. So she is famous and popular. I encourage all of us, our beautiful audience, to, to look at uh, Lori's work and to find her books and articles. And you can also easily find her in, in Facebook and Twitter. And if you would like, uh, you can contact her and uh, I'm sure that uh, she will be keen to, to, to respond uh, to you. Lori and Najwa, <laughs> because I felt so touched to her. Uh, I thought that it's good to see or to, to present to, to my uh, wonderful audience what I found uh, about Lori and how she touched deeply Najwa's, uh, Najwa's soul and uh, Najwa's personality. We both like children. I'm sure that all moms do the same. So uh, I have a huge love for, for children and uh, I wish them all the best, especially today, their first day uh, at schools, inshallah, and may Allah uh, protect them from any harm. We also, uh, we both like to make a change. For me, changing is... Uh, is a practice that I do. I don't like my day to be typical. So there is no way that I can make it similar to yesterday. And hopefully it will not be inshallah the same for, uh, from tomorrow. So changing is part of my, my lifestyle that I like to, to see in, in, uh, in my life, whether it is social or uh, professional. We both work to inspire others. I hope that, uh, what we practice here in the college or what we practice in our classes inspire others to be uh, very distinguished people, to be uh, relaxed uh, people when it comes to uh, social and emotional life. Sometimes your, your busy and hectic schedules will take you away from the calm or the comfort zone. So we hope that with reading such beautiful uh, books that will bring you back to, the, to that area where you feel inspired and where you feel uh, so happy and pleased. We both love writing. I, I do have some, or not some, many, many attempts to write. Uh, it's not published, it's very personal, but I'm so proud that I have memories of most of uh, the stages of my, my life. I'm, I'm still having some uh, you know, notes that I took when I was a college student, uh, when I was studying in the state, when I get married with my husband, and then when I have children and uh, I continue this habit. So it's lovely to be a writer. We both believe in the power of reading and changing the world. I believe that you share with us this. And uh, most of the messages I, I, I read in uh, Lori's books talk about how we can change the world to the best and to the better of the uh, people's life. We both are moms. We are so proud of this. Uh, having children, it's really not even change your career, but <laughs> changing the whole, uh, the, the whole aspect of your life. You, you, you become different than uh, the way you used to. But, uh, but at the end, you really feel that maybe uh, being mom is the, the most su successful part in your life. The impact I have, I, I have a huge impact uh, when I read uh, Lori's uh, books. Nasser is my deaf uh, brother. I get so emotional, sorry. Uh, Nasser is 
I don't, I don't consider him as a, as a brother to me. He's like more like a son uh, to Najwa. So when I first read about Loris, I'm so sorry. <laughs> when I first re read uh, Lori's book as an author, I was immediately touched. I felt her support and love uh, for children. Emmanuel's story touched me deeply since, since I have a brother with the disability. My brother Nasser, 27 years old, was born healthy and normal like other children. But when he was two, he got infected with meningitis, which caused him to go deaf. Nasser, despite his disability, tried to prove himself of, to his family and to everybody else. He graduated from high school and got a job. He drives his own car and practices his life normally like other young men. Nasser plays soccer and the people of determination football team, UAE team. He is now in Cairo in Egypt. I'm so proud of him, competing in one of the regional uh, football uh, championship. He is active, uh, personality. Uh, that's why he granted uh, to be chosen uh, in the, uh, as a member uh, in the UAE uh, Emirati uh, Association of the Deaf uh, from 2020-21 until 2025. Nasser uh, changed my life as a mom, as a, uh, as a lady, as a, a professional, and he continued uh, to do uh, these changes in my life. Uh, I hope him and all our special uh, student people of determination, the very best of luck. In this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. This is uh, a quote I got it from Emmanuel Ofoso, and we will shed some light if I have time, inshallah, on his uh, story. The reading list that I recommend for this wonderful author, that she has, of course, many, many uh, books, but this is what uh, really touched me. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren's Big Bold Plans, Emmanuel's Dream, Two Truths and a Lie, Be a Change Maker. Those are the books I really enjoyed reading. I really enjoyed uh, and uh, analyzing in terms of uh, part maybe of uh, our job or part of my social and uh, academic life. I, I enjoy them a lot. Maybe the one uh, touched me uh, more is Emmanuel's, uh, a Ghanaian uh, boy who, who changed the whole uh, country and their perception uh, and seeing and believing in special uh, people. Uh, he bikes his, his uh, bicycle with one leg, all the country, and uh, really he uh, uh, bring messages to those people who they, sometimes normal people would say, we cannot do this, we cannot do that. So he said like, look at me uh, and what we can do. Big bold plans, if I have time, Dr. Uh, Myra. Are we okay? Because I cannot see your picture, please, Doctora. If you, do we have time? Yes, you do have time, Dr. Najwa. Okay. Yes, you still have time. Good. So also another touching story, uh, yeah, and I, I liked maybe uh, a lot is the Elizabeth Warren's uh, Big Bold Plans, which dis discover the uh, inspiration uh, story uh, of uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren and her uh, lifelong commitment to working hard and advocating for equality uh, in this compelling and accessible picture book biography. I uh, strongly recommend this book for all uh, our teachers to read it to their uh, teenagers. Uh, this senator always has a plan. This is what caught me. When a person has a plan, I think I believe that our children uh, right now, our teenagers right now need to have this plan in their, in their minds and in their souls where they can act upon and they can uh, draw their future uh, 
uh, upon what they they uh, they write in this in this plan. Uh, she she wanted this senator uh, to help others by becoming a teacher. When discrimination forced her to surrender that dream, she found another path. She she became a lawyer. Then life changed again, and Elizabeth became a professor of law. And she did not stop there. No matter her job title, Senator Elizabeth Warren has always worked to ensure that people with more power help those with less. I think this is a wonderful message also that we can spread out to our, to our friends, to our people, to our uh, members in the society. Some people, they do have some authority, they have power. So why not helping those they, uh, who has less uh, power and authority, bringing people together and making these bonds together, I think is the, uh, the successful part in any story. And this is what uh, the senator did in her life. She leads uh, by example, inspiring young people across the nation and pers to pursue their dreams despite obstacles like prejudice and inequality. Known for her dedication and willingness to adapt, Elizabeth Warren was persisted and become a voice for fairness and positive change. I think we, we, need, we need to, to elevate, uh, elevate our, our uh, uh, personalities to reach this ultimate goal where we can really bring to our children uh, the beauty of pursuing their dreams. Unfortunately, some some parents would would be missing this uh, this attitude when it comes to encouraging their their children from young age to have a dream, to to pursue this dream, and to celebrate achieving this dream. I think teachers also uh, have a huge role, a significant role, in, in doing so. If the parents uh, missed this part. I believe that teacher can continue this part and they can build on, uh, you know, students and children uh, plans to, to dream big. Don't uh, let your children dream small. I, I do have meet uh, students in, in, in college level. Uh, they are moving from one college to another. They are transferring from one major to another. And when I think about those students, I, I really have this conclusion that they didn't plan their future well, and they didn't plan it uh, in advance. So please, uh, if you are uh, a parent, push your child to write his dream on paper. Push the child to, to, uh, to imagine what he will be in the future. I was a child when, one day, like all of you, and my dad, Rahmatullah Ali, said, Najwa, you will grow up very distinguished and you will be uh, a part of the, of the society and you will be, be a, a very significant member, active member to change the world. Uh, these messages, I can see them uh, highlighted here in Lori's work. In all, in all her uh, books, she shed light on how we can do this, uh, the passion she, she carried and uh, the love for others she carried in her, in her uh, children books. I, I, I thought it's, it will be a wonderful uh, author uh, to be a part of our uh, daily life, especially with teachers. I believe if the teacher bring one book or one picture book of Lori's work every day for the child, I'm sure that she will contribute significantly in her uh, children and the students' uh, life. One more thing also I liked about her book is the two truths and one lie. It's alive. A very, very smart idea. She would go uh, like asking, did you know that there is a fungus that can control the, the mind of an ant and make it do its bidding? Uh, would you believe there is such a thing uh, as corpus flower, a 10 foot tall plants, with the blossom that smells like a zombie. So funny and, you know, mixing between facts and fiction. Uh, I thought it's a wonderful idea, a wonderful concept, concept to bring to children so they can uh, distinguish between what is the truth 
and what is false. Uh, we really need this kind of enjoyment when we read to our children. We need to bring them uh, both wings. I mean, the wings for seeing uh, the, the world uh, in a very fiction way to, to, to develop their imagination. And at the same time, we want them to see the, the reality and the facts that we have. Our world is developing fast and growing fast when it comes to knowledge. So let's have those, those children books to be source for, for both uh, fiction and nonfiction uh, uh, imagination for our children. So I found it uh, a very, a very powerful book that will stay in, in people's and in children's mind uh, and soul. I believe uh, these are uh, some of the uh, stories, some of the thoughts, and some of the feelings and emotions uh, I built with uh, Lori. Uh, that's why I, I, uh, I can see that we have many in common. Once you get to know your author, once you get uh, to know more about his life and how, how he sees or she sees the world, uh, uh, I think you will you will find some common things that related to your personal life. This is the connection I like our children to have when they read their, their own books. I recommend her books. I recommend uh, our wonderful uh, audience to dig deep uh, on her work. And I'm sure that you will enjoy it, inshallah. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Professor Myra, for such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dearest Dr. Najwa. I, I can assure our attendees that your uh, TBR stack, it's, it's a term among bibliophiles, it needs to be read stack, will definitely explode exponentially after, <laughs> after our webinar. So that's what we are hoping. And now it is my pleasure to introduce everyone to uh, the chair of the special education department, our queen of inclusive education, Dr. Hala el Hawaris. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Meyer, for this wonderful um, intro introduction. Hello um, and good morning to all of you. I'm very delighted, really, and grateful to be with you in the company of two uh, great women, a very successful woman from the College of Education, the College Acting Dean, Dr. Nejwa, and the College Assistant Dean for Research and Graduate Studies, Dr. Myra. And as you all know um, that we are all here today, actually, to celebrate uh, the Emirati Women's Day and to mark uh, this day, um, a day that we all believe is really important. And I personally really love the fact that we always, every year, right, we recognize and we acknowledge uh, this day, not only just congratulate women uh, for the achievements that they are doing, for the contributions that they are making also um, in the society, but also for um, to look at the history, right, of what women did and how they were able to make this. And uh, actually I was, I'm very happy today that to be part of this um, panel. So I can share with you some stories uh, of women who were very um, uh, successful. They have made significant contributions to, to the society. And uh, I would like to take also an oppor this opportunity and to thank Dr. Myra, my colleague for, as Dr. Nedra said, <laughs> She gave us an opportunity to be part of this great uh, startup grant about reading lives. And uh, in, this in this research, we were able to read and to discover actually the children literature. I have um, been reading and reading and, you know, many, many, many books um, lately, um, you know, for this research. And I'm very, really um, inspired, uh, you know, by a number of books that I'm going to share with you today. Um, also, I would like to congratulate all women, those who are in the front line, those who are at the back office, and those who are at homes um, for their great achievements, and uh, congratulations to all of you. So um, let me just start by, yeah. Okay, now um, today actually I'm going to share with you um, a number of female authors um, who are very influential around the world. And as Dr. Nejwa was able to come up with one author, <laughs> I was not able to do that. <laughs> Actually, um, I, I loved all these uh, female authors and I have really found that they have um, 
you know, um, written a number of books and all their books, they were really great. And some of the books, they were about our theme today, the women's, um, you know, about women's and how, and the contributions of women. And that's what I have selected. I have selected um, my favorite books, of course, and but also I was uh, I try to find books that are related to our theme today uh, to share them with you. So um, the first author that I really want to talk uh, to share with you um, her book is um, Teresa Robertson, and she's from Hong Kong. Uh, she was raised in Canada, and she writes a number of books for young and also for. Uh, young adults and for children. They were like fiction and non-fiction books. The book that's really, I found it very inspiring, it's The Queen of Physics. I don't know how many of you, and please use um, the shout box and let me know, how many of you have heard about Dr. Wu Xin Shang? I, I hope that I'm pronouncing her name correctly. <laughs> Today I'm going definitely to, to uh, share with you a number of names and I hope that I am, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm really pronouncing all the names correctly. If I don't, so please forgive me. So have, do you know, uh, have you heard about her? Please go ahead to the shot box, either say yes or no. Okay, so we can see that many, right? <laughs> they don't have, they have not heard about um, Dr. Wu Xiangsheng. Actually, she is, truly a queen of physics. And what she has done in the area of physics, it was really uh, something that's very significant, but sadly that we did not hear about her. And that's why I'm very grateful, grateful really to Teresa Robertson and that she uh, writes that book about her and to tell us more about her life. Dr. Wu Shi Shang, um, before 100 years ago, she was able to go to the school, right? And that was in China. Uh, at the time that when women, they don't go to school. So um, she went through a number of obstacles and that was one of them like, you know, to be able to go. And of course that was due to the support that she got from her parents. And, uh, and she continued actually until her doctorate. So she did her PhD uh, in the United States. And when she went to the US, she also faced another obstacles for two reasons. First, because she's a woman, and secondly, because she's an Asian, right? She's from Asia. So this is really, I think it's very sad to see how women, what they went through, right? A uh, long time ago, these kind of discriminations and, and, um, and although all of these obstacles that she went through, but she was able to move forward and look at her that, uh, pair, you know, her father's code, and that's what really I found it to be very powerful. Uh, she said that my father's, that's what he's always telling her that just put your head down and keep right walking forward. So this is it. So that's how, that how she was able to overcome all the obstacles and to be able to be successful in her life. I thought to share with you um, what is really, I found it very sad and very shameful what her colleagues, the males, scientists, what they used to do. They used to come to her, ask her for help, and they get her work, you know, and then for their own benefits. And they don't even recognize or, you know, give her any kind of credit. She has been denied jobs because she's an Asian a female, an Asian female. She also, you know, all her work, she did not get a credit for that because again, it's an area that's considered as a male dominant maybe area, physics, right? So, um, and I think, you know, if we don't really read stories like, or we don't really know about what kind of uh, contributions that she did, Dr. Wu Shi Yongchong in the area of nuclear science, in the area of the beta decay, it was really great. And when I go back with my memory for our science book or the history book, we did not hear about her. Right? And I think this is really, um, that's what makes this book it's a great book. And I hope that you can share it with your students, sisters, recommend it to others, because it's really telling us about a very successful uh, woman who has really made uh, significant contributions in the society. Another book, uh, another author that also I want to share with you her book is Kiyo McClare. And also she's uh, British. She moved and lived in Toronto. And uh, her book, Name, the title of her book is um, it, Begin, it Began with a Page. 
And this book is also about, um, it's a true story. Most of the books that I chosen, actually, they are biography books. Uh, so they are telling us uh, true stories about women and what they have done. So um, Jayu Fujikawa, I don't know how many of you have heard about her, but also she has done great and she has paved the way actually for the illustrators, uh, you know, and writers to be able to include um, diverse, um, you know, individuals or in their, <clears throat> in their stories. When she was uh, published her first book, look at her illustration. Let me show you the illustration. <clears throat> so in her illustration, she tried to, you know, to include babies from all over the world, right? And with different races, different color and so on. At the time, we are talking about 1960. And I think we all know that was a time when we have, you know, the fight against, you know, the civil rights movements. And this is a time when the discrimination was, uh, I would say it was very huge and, you know, the segregations and there was, um, you know, a big, um, uh, you know, uh, discrimination when it comes to people of color. So at that time, she refused, okay, to publish her, her book unless they keep her illustrations. So she was really very determined, very progressive woman. And I find this to be really um, a very inspiring story to share with you. Okay, actually I was, <laughs> Dr. Nej was the story, but now I'm going to tell you more about the story. Laurie Ann Thompson. And uh, Laurie Ann Thompson, um, her story has really touched me, you know, also greatly that she's talking about a boy from Ghana. Okay, and this boy, just if you look at him, let me ask you just by looking at the picture, what is odd about this boy? Can you tell? I don't know why I can't see the, the, their comments. Maybe Dr. Myra, you can help me. So, so far, Dr. Hala, uh, no comments yet. No comments? Nothing. Well, Nothing please in... look at the pictures. <laughs> Nothing in the chat box yet. <laughs> what, what is, does he look normal to you? His leg. So, Mo, uh, Dr. His Mono, leg. Yeah, Dr. Absolutely. Mono was saying that. Yeah. So, um, Emmanuel, um, that little boy, he has a deformed leg, right, since he was born. And, uh, and I really want to tell you a little bit about the story so you can see what he went through. <laughs> and to see also the, the role of the parents and how you know, the courage of the parents can also support um, you know, their children. And here I'm also talking about the role of the mother, more specifically because what happened, his father actually abandoned him and he left him. And uh, his mother was there for him and she was the one who supports him and she was carrying him to the school about two miles away. So just imagine this, carry your child every day two miles to take him to the school. Emmanuel, he was also very determined and has the passion that he just wants to act like, you know, the normal children, just like other children. So what he has done, he was, um, as you can see that he was crawling, he was working actually by, you know, shining shoes. <laughs> and he was doing everything that he can just to be like normal, normal children. Even he taught himself, he taught himself, you know, how to play soccer. He taught himself how to cycle without any kind of support, without any kind of accommodation. So I found this really a great story. And actually for each story, I try to show you um, you know, to highlight the themes of the story, because I, I, I believe this is really important for us to see what is, um, what is behind, you know, right, or what kind of message the author is trying, you know, to highlight in this story. So Emmanuel, um, as I said, his father abandoned him. All the people surrounded him, they were calling him as useless and cursed. And after all of that, he was able to move forward and to overcome all this. Um, all these barriers and to become very successful. And Dr. Nejwa earlier, she has talked about his contribution and how he was able to organize a 400 mile bike ride across Ghana, right? To show the people and to make them aware of his um, disability and his ability. It doesn't mean that he's disabled, he cannot do anything, right? He was able to hop to school that two miles every day 
he was able to ride his bicycle across Ghana. So I think that's really a wonderful story and it's very inspiring. And I really, I hope that you can consider it as one uh, of the stories in your books, book list. And if you can also share it with other. Also, um, schools, if we are thinking about the school libraries, I think that's one of the most important thing that they may need to consider the books that I'm going to share with you today, because I personally believe that they could make a great addition, right, to the book, and they will, you know, to see this uh, diverse representation, to support the diverse representation in the school libraries. Um, also, another quote that I found it um, very powerful when the author said that he said, "Yupa inspired legislation upholding equal rights for children with disabilities." So look at Emmanuel. He's a really become a national hero. So I found this really very touching and wonderful story. Another story by Janine Sander, and she's also a wonderful author um, from Australia. And uh, she has a couple of books that I'm going to share with you that are based, uh, they are mainly about gender uh, equality. And uh, she, in her first book that I'm going to share with you, The No Difference Between Us. And this book is about twin. Uh, a girl and a boy, right? And both of them, um, they are the same. That's what, exactly what the message that she's uh, trying to explain here. Both of them, they have hopes, just as humans, right? And they have dreams and so on. And they can have the same, the same dreams. If you look at the boy, what is the boy holding? He's holding a doll. Probably some male will say, mm, we don't like to see that, <laughs> right? They don't want to see a boy is holding a doll, but it's okay. And this is what is this all about? Like we don't want uh, that. I think that's this is a time when we want children at young, at younger age to start to see that you know to hear about and to see examples of males who are doing things which normally for them to do. <laughs> it's not something shameful for them to carry a baby or to play with a doll. It's okay. But I know even if when I go back and if I relate myself to this, um, in my country, um, I'm coming, I, originally I'm from Sudan. And in my country, I don't think my, um, you know, I guess in, in, in my culture, this is, will be very much um, accepted, right? And people will be very happy to hear about this. And that's what they always tell the boys, like, you don't have to cry. We don't want to see tears in boys. Boys should not do this and that. If they see them, they are playing with dolls. Probably they will say, no, you need to play with the car and so on. So as you all know, we are shaping our own, um, right? The young boys and girls. So um, this is a time when they start to pick on the gender stereotypes. And that's why I personally believe this will be a great addition, a great book um, to use and to share with children at a younger age. Um, so we can really, um, I guess, fight against uh, the gender um, inequality. So it's a great book. It's really um, also, um, you know, if you look at the themes, it's also about tolerance and about how you can respect, you know, the gender and uh, it has also include empathy, um, you know, in the story. So it's really great. And I hope that you can also share it with others. Another book also by the same author, Janine Sanders is No Means No. When I read this book, actually, I was thinking about, um, is that acceptable in my culture? No, it's not. When we thought, talk about young girls or boys, we always teach them that they need to be obedient, right? They need to respect elders. You don't say no to, to elder, to, you know, to anybody who's older than you. But is that right? Is it always right to say yes? And if we think about it, of course, in this book, also the author was trying to talk more also about the, the bodies, right? And for the children to be able to, uh, you know, to protect themselves and to be able to say no when they, they don't like the way how others are, you know, hugging them, kissing them and so on. But generally speaking, I think this is a very good story to empower women. And as I'm coming from a culture that really it's always telling um, younger, and I'm really not looking only at girls, but girls and boys to uh, not say no for elders. 
I think it's time now for us to understand that sometimes it's good to say no. And we need to teach the kids to say no. And we need to teach the parents to accept the no when it comes from the child and to respect it. And this is maybe will be the best way for us really to come up with, um, with a society that's going to have less violence, right? And more respect to the, more respect to, to no, to the word no, which is going to really to help us to have, um, you know, more respect um, in the, for the humankind. So I think really we need to um, think about these books and to uh, deeply about what kind of messages they are sending and what can we really take out um, of these stories that are written by great um, female authors. Also, um, so that was mainly the aim that's to empower the young girls to, you know, to grow up into empowered adults. So I found it very great. Okay, another story. <laughs> I'm going, yeah, did you have, I have two minutes? I will go fast. So Nivola Claire, she has a book and also about a very successful woman, Sylvia Earle. And I don't know how many of you have heard about her, but personally, I did not. She's also a great woman. She's an ocean grapher. I was able to learn about her um, biography, about her contribution to the area of the science, but sorry that we did not hear that much about her. Since I don't have that much time, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. Another story that I want to share is uh, Redondo, and that's Spanish author. And she writes a book about the, Seda, the day Seda, Seda arrived. And this book is really a, telling you a story about a young immigrant girl, right, who went to a country she, could, she was not able to speak the language. But guess what she did and her friend? They were able to teach each other the, the language. And let me show you this image, which is really amazing. So by telling, looking at each object, teaching each other, you know, the, the language, they were able to be able to communicate. So they were able to overcome all these barriers and the borders, I guess, <laughs> of the language. So it's telling us the power of language when it comes to communication. And what I really like the most about this story is that how it show immigrants in a more positive way. So their language is also equal, right, to the local language. So I felt this is really great. Um, another book, and, and I'm not going to have enough time to talk about it, but I will talk very brief about A Splash of Red uh, for Jen Bryant. <laughs> Jen Bryant also talked about a self-taught African man, Horace Pippen, and how he was able to become an artist at the end. And I found this really to be um, a very inspiring book. Although all the obstacles that he went through he lost his arm due to World War One, but he was also able, you know, to regain, um, you know, to, uh, you know, to be able to use his arm. And although his teacher was not that supportive to him, but he was able also to overcome that and to become an artist and his work to be, um, you know, shared in some galleries. Okay, um, let me move on. Um, the Six Thoughts uh, by Jane Bryant is about Lewis Braille. And I really want you to know more about Lewis Braille. Um, are, of course, those who are in special education, and probably most of you have heard about Braille, the system that is used for reading and writing, but I hope that you can read uh, this story so you can know about him and how he was able to invent the system when he was a child, 13, 14 years old. So I think that's really amazing very inspirational story. And uh, one of the books also, I hope that I think that's a time for us to talk about Huda Sharawi. She's an Egyptian feminist and she has also uh, write the book Harim Years, right? It's, uh, and that book is, was mainly about her memory. And she's coming from a very rich home and she was talking about how she was forced, you know, to get married to her husband and all the operation and all of the, injustice that she went through and how they were, uh, you know, her family, they were favoring her brother because he's a boy and uh, all of these kind of discrimination. So I believe this is a great book because like this kind of book, they have made, you know, the changes and the, you know, um, when it comes to the women's right. So she plays a great deal also in uh, our life. Uh, the last book that I'm going to share is by Helen Keller. And um, I don't know how many of you have uh, heard about her, but if you don't, I hope that you can also add this to your book list. She is deaf and blind. And she was able um, you know, to, um, to prepare a book, to publish a book, and also to finish 
um, her uh, actually her, the college, and she was the first female, right? She's not, a, I will not say a female, but a female or a male who is deaf and blind and to finish college at 19, uh, I think 1904. And, uh, and she always, that's the way how she described herself and her life at, that she lived at the sea um, and then um, in a dense uh, fog, a, a dense fog as she can't see and she can't hear. And this is really a very heartbreaking story to see that how she, is, she was telling more about her life and how she was not able you know, to learn from her teacher Sullivan. But here how you can see how Sullivan was also a hero by teaching her using you know, the method of finger spelling and telling her or teaching her that each object has a word. She didn't know that. And actually she went through a lot of frustrations, you know, so she can be able uh, to get also to this point and to learn. So it was really great. And I hope that you will all know about Helen Keller. So finally, I would like to share with you how these books, um, you know, shaped me. They definitely shaped my interest in the area of social justice, equity and diversity. And this is my area um, of interest. A research interest and also actually affected my choice of my profession and books that I have read a long time ago when I was at school like Helen Keller a long time uh, I read about her these books they have really also affected me and they make me uh, you know and they help me to believe in people with disabilities and to become a strong advocate for them thank you very much and I hope that you have really enjoyed <laughs> uh, this journey with a number of uh, influential female authors from all over the world. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hala. As you can see, we have uh, very little time and a lot of books to cover. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. So um, now on to me. Let me just share my screen. Let me see whether I can. Uh, do it on full screen mode. There you go. Okay, so again, thank you everyone for being here. You've already heard from my two co-PIs, Dr. Hala and Dr. Najwa about our research project, which is uh, the reason why we are also doing this webinar apart from celebrating Emirati Women's Day with all of you. Uh, so this is our research team. We're very lucky to have an international collaborator who is serving as an external PI for the project, uh, Dr. Rowani Tupas, whom you already met last year. Um, he is a renowned social linguist from University College London. I'm very privileged to have uh, fabulous ladies, um, Dr. Najwa and Dr. Hala, both very avid readers as part of the research team as well. We used to have an external RA from Singapore. I think Rilla is here with us today. Hi, Rilla. Uh, do say hello if you are here. Uh, she's an award-winning Malay-Singaporean children's book author who I believe has just completed her master's degree um, in curriculum and instruction at the National Institute of Education in Singapore. Uh, we also have two amazing uh, PhD RAs who are with us today. Uh, maybe you can unmute yourselves uh, very quickly. Uh, Najla, can you say hello? Najla, are you with us? So Najla Sultan al Owais is uh, doing her PhD in math education. Hind, are you with us today? Hi. You? There you go. Just say hello. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hinda Fali. I'm a PhD student, Andrew Sultan. Uh, and thank you so much, Dr. Omar, for the opportunity to be part of this wonderful project. And thank you also, Dr. Hala and Dr. Najwa, for the wonderful presentation. Won't take much time because of our time here. So thank you, and hopefully we will talk much more later on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hin. So our uh, research team is multidisciplinary and also proudly multi-ethnic and all bibliophiles. Now, one of the things that we have been doing as part of the project, as you can already hear, as you have already heard from Dr. Hala and Dr. Uh, Najwa, is to develop a catalog of picture book titles that portray an awareness of otherness and exceptionalities. So we have been scouring, reading, accessing, creating a lot of tables. <laughs> I I'm sure Hind and Naj, Najla can relate um, from around the world for the past 10 years. So that is our scope. 
from the Schneider Book Award, which provides recognition to well-written books that depict exceptionalities and special needs in stories and in narratives, uh, to the Middle East Book Award, to Freeman Award, which recognizes exceptional Southeast Asian literature, and then the White Raven selection from the International Youth Library in Munich, which provides recognition to amazing children's book titles from around the world. There's also the Children's Africana Book Awards, um, CABA, and the Etisalat Prize for Literature. So apart from award-winning books, we're also on the lookout for outstanding titles that may not have received any formal recognition or award, but have caught our eye in terms of authenticity, depth of narrative, and the visual artistry con conveyed in the story. So for those who may not be aware, I do have a website on children's literature, YA fiction, literary novels, and poetry that has been running since 2010. So we are celebrating our 11th year officially um, this 2021. So it's gatheringbooks.org. I'm running it with a team of people coming from the US, uh, the Philippines, and Singapore. So in 2019, I read only exclusively female authors and novelists as part of our Year of Reading Women annual theme. So highlighting female authors and illustrators is really an advocacy of mine. So most of the books that I am sharing with you today, I most probably have already read and featured in gathering books. I also served as the chair of the program committee for the Asian Festival of Children's Content or AFCC in Singapore from 2011 until 2019. And I am still currently serving as their international advisor at large. So I know some of the authors and illustrators I will be featuring today personally through my involvement with the festival over a number of years. So before I start off with my recommended list, I think it is important to mention a few caveats to this presentation. One, this is hardly an exhaustive list. I'm only given around 20 minutes or so because we still want to have a Q&A with you all. And so I needed to be quite circumspect in my choices. As I was making this list, I realized how many female authors and artists are in diaspora. So this is a celebration of hybrid female identities of authors who may have moved from their country of birth or citizenship to a different place altogether. Third, this is not presented in any particular order. They're all equally valuable to me. There is no one singular favorite. Fourth, I tried, I tried my best to include female literary novelists, but it will take me an entire day to go through all of them. So I had to limit my scope to just contemporary authors of children's lit, middle grade, young adult fiction. So I tried to find women creators whom most of you may not necessarily be familiar with. So while there are popular best-selling authors, novelists here, I made sure I included a few who may be lesser known to a much bigger audience. So fifth, the more I read, the more I realize that I still know very little. That is why there is that Padlet wherein we are inviting you to share your favorite authors as well. So it's an open call to everyone to help us find even more female authors whom we haven't discovered yet. So on to the books. Since the time I created this presentation last March, I made sure not to add any more titles, but I couldn't resist including these two books that I am hoping you can check out, especially as we celebrate Emirati Women's Day. I actually just received uh, this yesterday uh, as a review copy. So I'm hoping that you can check it out. Um, so let's start with uh, Merdok Amini, an Iranian-born children's illustrator who is now based in the UK. She has collaborated with a number of female authors such as um, Hena Khan and the amazing Nedi Okorafor. Here is a list of the books that she has illustrated, my favorite being Yosoi Muslim, which I have read aloud countless of times to both my undergraduate and graduate students. I'm sure you can remember me reading this in our classes. I love Naomi Shihab Nye, Palestinian American poet. She wrote the award-winning middle grade novel Habibi, which I have read years ago. She does not publish a lot of picture books, so City's Secrets is a real treat. And in keeping with Emirati Women's Day, you may want to check out her Amaze Me, which is a collection of poems for girls. I have had the pleasure of listening to Fat Fatima Sharafeddin uh, speak in Singapore for the AFCC, uh, the Asian F Festival of Children's Content, sometime in 2014. And I have been a fan of her picture book biographies ever since, particularly the amazing discoveries of Ibn Sina and the amazing travels of Ibn Batuta. I know that she has also published for Kalimat, 
and I am definitely waiting for both Najla and Hind to translate these lovely titles for me. A Trip Like No Other, I think, uh, The Little Girl Who, and If I Were a Bird. Now, here are uh, my favorite Filipina authors. Two are in diaspora, Candy Gourlay and Isabel Rojas, while Becky Bravo is based in the Philippines. I met Candy and Isabel, or Pepper, as we call her in the children's lit circles in Singapore, as they have been featured book creators for the AFCC. Candy is a multi-award winning middle grade author uh, based in the UK. Tall Story was shortlisted for 13 prizes and was nominated for the Carnegie Medal in the UK. Shine was long listed for the Guardian Children's Fiction Prize and I have yet to get my hands on her first picture book, Is It a Mermaid? And her newest novel, YA novel, a Bone Talk, was shortlisted for the Costa Book Awards in the United Kingdom. Isabel is an amazing children's book artist, uh, now based in New York. While she has been illustrating a number of titles published in the US, such as uh, Bulala, Witch Spa, and her latest Our Skin, a first conversation about race, which I am sure will win a lot of awards next year. I am very excited for her first book ever that she has written and uh, illustrated herself called um, The Adventures of Teen Palm Squid Happens. I will be forever indebted to Isabel Rojas for illustrating the book cover for my first ever edited book for AFCC, Beyond Folk Tales, Legends and Myths. She has also designed the format, layout of the book, imbuing it with a sense of dynamism and artistry. Becky Bravo has published a lot of picture books and has earned multiple awards and recognition for her work, my favorite being The Cat Painter and Lilai. Next up are my recommended female authors from Singapore. So shout out to Rilla who is here with us today. Leila Bukharim is a clear example of a female author in diaspora. So originally from Lebanon, she is now based in Singapore with her family. Her first picture book, All Too Much for Oliver, is inspired by her own son who has hypersensitivity. And it's actually the, the perfect book candidate for the catalog that we are curating for our research on, on exceptionalities. She has partnered with Barbara Moxham, who has been illustrating most of her picture books. I introduced Rilla earlier as one of our external RAs uh, for the research project. She's a multi-award winning Malay Singaporean children's book author. She's also an entrepreneur a lady boss who has been transforming children's book content into a lot of multimedia platforms. Emily Lim is one of the more prolific book authors in Singapore, and Bunny Finds the Right Stuff is reminiscent of The Velveteen Rabbit, for those of you who may know that story, which is one of my favorites. Emily's picture books feature the sense of being different quite distinctly, and she does it in such a convincing and credible manner that moves the reader. If you are not familiar with Susie Lee's art yet, you are in for a treat. She was based in Singapore for a time, which was awesome, but now she's back in South Korea. Uh, we had several opportunities to meet because of AFCC. She's best known for her wordless picture book trilogy, Shadow, Wave, and Mirror. Her wordless version of Alice in Wonderland, though, is totally unforgettable with a meta story within a story element to it that is just downright brilliant, eerie, and inventive. I met Ying Chang Compostine when she was invited as a speaker also in Singapore. She has such a wide range of publications from picture books to YA novels. I would like to highlight Revolution is not a dinner party because it is based on her childhood growing up in China during the Cultural Revolution. Her hometown is in Wuhan, which is ground zero for COVID as you very well know. I interviewed her in Singapore um, and she spoke about being constantly um, afraid as a child that the Red Guard would come and search their home and how she wrote her diary on pieces of paper, which she would hide in different parts of her house. Uh, she read those diary entries from when she was nine and 10 years old to write this book, which took her almost seven years to complete. Uh, Secrets of the Terracotta Soldier is one of her latest novels co-authored with her only son, Vincent. Nina Sabnani from India, is one of the picture book makers I had the pleasure to meet in Singapore. Apart from being a book creator, she is a filmmaker as well. Let me just highlight Stitching Stories here, which is a powerful story that Nina has written in collaboration with the artists of Kalaraksha. It tells the story of two women, 
Rani Ben and Meghi Ben and the journeys that they have taken to find a new home and how their stories are immortalized through their embroidery. Guo Jing is one of the up and coming illustrators from China, currently based in Singapore. Like Susie Lee, she creates wordless picture books and the only child, uh, one of her best, is a 112 page wordless picture book, which was inspired by her sense of isolation growing up under the one child policy in China. Stormy, uh, a story about finding a forever home, is one of her newest wordless picture book title, which would tug at the heartstrings of all readers, regardless of age, especially those who have canine companions. Pauline Young is a Mi'kmaq First Nation Canadian illustrator, and these two picture books, poetry books, um, she has illustrated speak to each other and demonstrate what it is like to be a residential school survivor in Canada. Uh, both books powerfully depict the destructive effects of colonialism and what it is like to lose and find one's voice. I love author illustrators. It is like they're doubly gifted with the ability to create both visual and textual narrative that the reader can lose herself in. Akiko Miyakoshi is one of my favorite female author illustrators from Japan. Uh, there is a dreamlike, surreal quality to her art that is strange yet wonderfully comforting at the same time. Uh, Naomi Kojima is another author illustrator I met in Singapore. Her alphabet picture book is a pure delight and Mr. and Mrs. Steve is just so much fun. In the interviews that I, I have done with her for um, my website gathering books, she did say that if there was one word to describe her art, it would be humorous. And that is clearly evident in her picture books. Margarita Engel is another multi-award winning novelist I was privileged to meet um, in, at AFCC. Her picture books fit exactly what we are looking for in our research as they are biographies of little known female musicians or scientists from Cuba, where Margarita's mother is originally from. So practically all of her books received multiple recognition, as you can see from her book covers. The curious thing about uh, this amazing poet is that she's a scientist by training. Okay, so if more people are still uh, coming into our room. Uh, she studied for a doctoral degree in biology at the University of California, Riverside before uh, becoming a full-time poet. Her novels uh, written in verse are biographies of historical figures from Cuba. And recently she has been writing her memoirs as seen in Enchanted Air and Soaring Earth, which are really powerful reads of how it is like to be a second generation woman of color in the US. Dao Pumiruk is a Thai American illustrator whose works feature amazing nonfiction picture books, mostly biographies of notable females of color, such as Maya Lin, a Chinese American artist architect, Katherine Johnson, an, an African-American scientist who saved Apollo 13. My favorite though is her illustrations in One Girl, very recently published. It left me with my heart on my throat, probably because I see myself reflected in this brown, bright-eyed girl holding a book in this fantastical universe of books. Po Wale is an illustrator from Vietnam. Uh, she has written her own books as seen in The Cloud Princess and uh, Sun and Moon Sisters. Her latest picture books are Sugar in Milk, a collaboration with Sriti Umrigar, an award-winning Indian-American journalist, critic, and novelist. However, I'd really like to draw your attention to The Most Beautiful Thing, just published in 2020. It's a collaboration with Kao Kalia Yang, who drew inspiration from her own childhood experience as a Hmong refugee. It is a moving and tender intergenerational story and what cons about what constitutes the most beautiful thing. Jillian Tamaki is the perfect example of an illustrator with hybrid identities. Her father is Japanese Canadian and her mother is Egyptian American. So she was originally known for her graphic novel, uh, This One Summer, which won the Caldecott. I'd like to highlight our little kitchen one of her recent picture book publications in 2020. This is a no-nonsense story of a group of people working in a community kitchen, whipping up beans, vegetables, fruits together with just the right amount of cinnamon sugar and a splash of ketchup. So the act of doing community service is not romanticized, it simply is. The busy hands and comfort food, doing all the talking and loving that were neither expressed nor articulated in a mushy manner. 
Maxine Beneba Clark is an Australian of Afro-Caribbean ancestry, and she publishes across a range of genres, from picture books to stories written for grown-ups. My favorite among her works is The Patchwork Bike, with this androgynous, hip, young girl on her makeshift bike. So the entire story is uplifting, irreverent, filled with energy, and also challenged the stereotypical notion of people in poverty as simply helpless or miserable or dependent individuals deserving only of pity. Dasha Tolstikova is a graphic novelist and also a picture book maker originally from Russia. Her memoir, A Year Without Mom, tells the story of the author as a 12-year-old girl living in Moscow, Moscow in the 1990s with her divorced mother and grandparents. Anait Semerjsayan was born in Kazakhstan, but is now based in the US and has illustrated this picture book about a girl who has just immigrated with her family from Egypt and the struggles, including bullying that she experienced in trying to fit in. I discovered Emmanuel Houdart, a visual artist from France, when I served as an international research fellow in 2016 and 2017 at the International Youth Library in Munich. Abri, or shelter refuge, uh, shows the many aspects in our life uh, that we can't consider a form of shelter over and above the physical structure of a house. I especially love uh, Saltimbanques, uh, the blurb, which I have roughly translated from French into English, thanks to Google Translate, says, we were all part of the family of those who are not like the others and who do not especially care. We were the artists of our lives. Our destiny was to amaze the common people, to marvel and make them tremble, not to look like them. So I love Emmanuel Houdart. Marguerite Aboué was originally from Abidjan and is now based in France. Her Aya de Yupugan graphic novel series has now been made into a French animated film. And if I am not, if I'm correct, um, it's also available on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. Tomorrow is a story written by Syrian author, illustrator Nadine Kadan, describing the narrative of a young boy named Yazan, who has been spending all of his days cooped up at home when everything around him started to change. So it's slightly reminiscent of what has been happening for over a year now, thanks to the pandemic. But this one is due to the war happening outside of Yazan's home. I'm sure all of you know what's going on in Syria. And with a slightly similar theme, Isa Watanabe, born in Peru and of Japanese, Swiss, Spanish ethnicity, <laughs> created this evocative wordless narrative of migrants uh, depicting displacement and dispossession through visual allegory and visual metaphors. These two amazing women from Italy, Beatrice Alemania and Simona Seraulo, create the most beautifully designed picture books. I like how Beatrice Alemania plays around and inserts translucent, almost onion skin type pages in her books, which can be seen in her most recent work, Child of Glass and Forever. Simona Seraulo um, comes up with the most playful narratives that sort of blindside you with an emotional punch towards the end, even for the most jaded readers such as myself. Uh, these female or, uh, artists from Spain create the most haunting, strange, surreal works of art that you can hold in your hands through the pages of the books. Uh, she, um, Ana Juan, I think, have a few illustrated picture books in English that are accessible to a wider international audience. Uh, Beatrice Martin Vidal creates unforgettable picture books that have very sparse text, maybe just a few lines per page, really, with the highlight more in the artwork. I'm looking at the time, so I'm, I'm going to try to rush this very quickly. Uh, Katia Vermeery from uh, Belgium is a fairly recent discovery of mine. It was the big question that turned me into a fan. The big question posed by Elephant in the story being, how do you know you love someone? So there is subtlety here that goes beyond whimsy. It's a reminder of that which is essential. Oftentimes, lost in the frenzied hurry of things that we think we need to be doing, all the while missing out on what is the most important thing in life. Sonia Danowski from Germany creates the most ethereal art, as can be seen in some of these titles. As you can see, there are plenty of titles that depict relationships between grandparents and grandchildren in this book list. So as I wrap up this talk, which took longer than expected, <laughs> I want to acknowledge the fact that I am deeply privileged to have access 
to so many titles from around the world that I know have enriched my spirit with the recognition that not everyone may not have that kind of experience. Moreover, it's important to note that not all narratives um, come packaged in the pages of a book. There is the oral tradition of storytelling, of tales passed down from one generation to another that may not have been necessarily penned down or published or found in physical spaces, such as libraries or bookstores. Uh, this quote from Australian Ab Aboriginal writer Ambelin Kwaimulina is particularly worth reading and thinking about. So she was saying, the great libraries of the Aboriginal nations of this continent are not built of bricks or steel. Our knowledge is written into the land and our old people highly literate in reading the earth around them. But when strangers arrived on these shores, they did not understand our ways of knowing. And the arrival of the colonizers marked the beginning of another set of tales, the stories of the generations of Aboriginal people who lived the trauma of colonialism. And what she says here about diversity also moved me a great deal as I read the book that made me, where I read uh, Kwe Molina's essay. So I want to quote from her here. Um, she says, I want everyone who will come after me to inherit an earth bursting with diversity of species, of voices, of cultures, of ideas. And I know that the future is a story to which we all contribute. So look, look ahead. What do you want to see happen? Will you let the world shape you or will you shape the world? I know it can be hard, especially when choices are few and obstacles are many, but your life, your choices, your dreams, they matter. We can, none of us know the extent to which our story will intersect with the stories of others. Find your path and let no one diminish it or you. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, we now welcome you to um, share some of your thoughts, your comments, your feedback. So we do, I do see quite a few uh, written here on the chat box. Uh, Sana, would you like to share a few words? I, I know that you have uh, written something here. Would you like to unmute yourself? Or anyone uh, who would like to say a few words? Hello. Hello, thank you for this lovely, lovely event. Thank you for invite us all and share your experience with these uh, authors. Uh, thank you for uh, the inspiring words from the Dean and uh, Professor Halla. I am really honored to say and to share uh, some exciting news, which has to do with one of our a student, a doctoral student, actually in the special education department, uh, Miss Omnia, who has just uh, published her first book in children under the title, uh, I'm Thirsty. She is also the mother of a child with autism and her book is going to be published this October uh, 2021. So I'm really very honored because he's one of us. Well, I'm really very honored because I'm her advisor and I'm really very honored because he asked me to present that in public when it's gonna be out in the market. So let's uh, congratulate Omnia and uh, let's uh, share and support her uh, in this first start. Could be a famous uh, writer after a few years, Never, you, we never know. So exactly. I think I would like to share with uh, everyone here and uh, thank you again for this lovely lovely event thank you thank you dr maria anyone else who would like to share a few words hello yes sasina please go ahead hi and assalamu alaikum everyone uh, hope all are well inshallah and uh, doing great staying safe inshallah uh, i would like to thank you all uh, the dean um, dr hala uh, you and uh, Dr. G and everyone here for inviting us and uh, to such a great, great, great event uh, and happy Emirates uh, Women's Day. Thank you so much for everything. Awesome. So thank you, Hasina, for that. 
Uh, maybe we could invite our uh, PhD RAs who are here. Um, I'm not sure if Najla is now with us. Uh, maybe, uh, Rilla, would you like to say a few words? Hi, everybody. Hi, Myra. <laughs> Hi, Thank Rilla. You for Thank you for the sharing. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, some of the books that you featured, I was also about to borrow from the library. So definitely going to read on uh, the books. Awesome. Okay, so Rilla is uh, from, uh, it's one of our external RAs from Singapore. And like I said earlier, uh, multi award winning um, author as well. So anyone else who would like to say a few words? Dr. Nedjam, yes. Thank you very much, you know, like for this uh, hilarious presentation. Actually, you know, it's like I'm, I'm starting to, to dwell in different parts and, you know, it's like it is a world, you know, it's like map way, you know, it's like different uh, female authors from around the globe, you know, it's like, uh, participate and I see you know it's like even in the Arab world now we we have new um, author female authors which is a positive thing uh, because uh, for a long time it is um, uh, male dominant you know it's like the, the, the idea of writing you know uh, this is very very you know it's like and thank you Dr. Amira you are just uh, an encyclopedia, you know, it's like I'm, you make my head <laughs> giddy <laughs> in terms of, you know, it's like following all those sources and the writing it is awesome. And I, I believe that, you know, it's like we're going uh, to, to look at that and, and, and read for those sources. Thank you very much, Dr. Anajwa, for sharing your uh, touchy story and Dr. Hala. It is hilarious, it's good. As I said, it is stimulating, it is provocative, it is proactive also for thinking. And thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much, Dr. Najam. Maybe we could invite Dr. Mona or Dr. Ali to say a few words. Uh, they are also fierce uh, literary advocates. A oh, lovely, lovely presentation, Dr. Myra, Dr. Halan, Dr. Nedua. I was eating up your words listening to these lovely recommendations, and I can't wait to get my hand at the presentation so I can get all these lovely, lovely titles. I think it's a very, very timely event, and it's a great way really to start um, the week. It gave me motivation. <laughs> <laughs> to start my week and plan my week ahead. But yeah, thank you so much for your lovely presentations. Okay, I think uh, Dr. Ali Ibrahim has a question. Would you like to share it, Dr. Ali? Sure, Dr. Myra. Thank you so much for um, arranging or this uh, lovely event. I, I, I'm very happy to, re to, to see you and Dr. Najwa and Dr. Hala. <clears throat> Um, and to see all of these uh, uh, picture box. And, but my question would be, ha have you in, in the project, have you considered the question of, of, of uh, seeing whether there are some uh, running themes across all of the picture box? Um, and, and the second part is whether this um, has influenced um, the bringing up of children or how it affects their thoughts and emotions, whether they are young kids or, or teenagers or, or any, any other age group. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm just talking about, you know, the analysis of, 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 the, of the picture box and, and their effect as well. If, if you can elaborate on this, I would appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Ali. That's exactly what we will be doing uh, for the project. Um, in fact, uh, that's precisely going to be the content of our catalog of diverse picture book titles. They will be arranged according to the dominant themes of those narratives. So we are hoping to have like a sharing of themes uh, related um, specifically to special education or special needs, themes that relate to high creatives, uh, themes that relate to um, gifted um, mathematicians and scientists or people of color. So we're also looking at other themes like intersectionality, uh, the way that, for example, your race, your ethnicity, your nationality, um, your uh, 
social economic status um, and your being neurotypical, for example, may have contributed to your success in life. So all of these things, we are very gradually examining it. It's quite a huge project. So there are two parts to it. One part would be the reading lives of teachers. That's why we have been interviewing colleagues and students. And another part is the creation of the catalog of diverse picture book titles. And we are now beginning uh, the uh, sharing of some of those diverse picture book titles with you all uh, starting today. So I know that we are now running over time. It's now 102. So thank you everyone for being here. I know how very busy everyone is, but we are really so happy to see all of you um, to celebrate Emirati Women's Day with us and to also celebrate women authors from around the world. Thank you all. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank okay. you, Mara. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.